Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to this celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. We hope that as you follow along uh, at home, you'll feel free to uh, respond as if you were here in church. Uh, it's kind of a, an eerie feeling as a presider to be at a pretty empty church. We have two, four, six, seven, eight. We have exactly 10 people, so um, not what I am used to uh, on a typical Easter Sunday morning. We wish you God's blessing and the joy of the season. And so next week we will also be live streaming the Eucharist at 10.30, 10.30 Mass uh, next weekend. And we'll continue to do that as long as we are all um, required to stay at home. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. So we gather on this beautiful day when we remember that our life is in the risen Lord. Let us ask him to forgive the times we have not loved as he calls us to. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the re renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man... God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy to Christ the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told him, They've taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, and the one who had arrived at the tomb first, 
and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we remember the re resurrection of Jesus, and the question that comes to my mind is, so where is he? If he rose, where is he? How do I now, in the 21st century, in this place, access the presence of the risen Lord? Because he's not just some figment of my imagination. If he is, then why are we here? He is a living, real, alive to us and to the world. Well, I've come to two uh, understandings of that, and this is my own Frank's theology, so you take it for what it's worth. First of all, I'm always struck by the fact that in all of the accounts of the resurrection, all of the times when the disciples encounter the risen Lord, he's got a body. You notice that? Even at the ascension, he has a body. It's different than ours. It's a glorified body, whatever. If you want to know what that means, read Thomas Aquinas. But it's a body. So it has some heft to it. It must. It must have some substance to it. It can't be some diaphanous thing that's floating around. It's real. The body's real. Jesus is real. And so I think that says two things to me. First of all, the human body is of incalculable value. We used to be very strong in the fact that we had to shed the body and only live in the spirit. I think we've discovered that's impossible. That we are both body and spirit, united, fused together. And it is through the body that people know who I am. People know what I think. People know my reactions. It is through the body that we love one another. If you say you love someone and you only love them in your head, you're not really loving them. You gotta show them that you love them by acts of love. And so the body is very essential. And that body of Jesus is also essential. We celebrate his body and blood every time we come to the altar. And that body of Jesus is real. It's material in some way, a different style of material than ours. But the point that I like to think about is that it is, as, it is material. And therefore, what is material here really is connected to the whole world. And so in some sense, Jesus resurrects into the cosmos, into the material, physical world. And it is through our encounter with that world, whether it's with individuals and relationships or it's in the beautiful creation that's around us, that we have the potential to encounter the risen Lord. It doesn't always happen, but it certainly is possible. And that leads me to another conclusion, that when we disrespect the human body, the person who is manifested in that body, we are really disrespecting the Lord Jesus himself. And for me, that means we cannot in any way reject another person. We cannot in any way persecute, hurt another person. We must always open ourselves to the other. As difficult as that may be at times, as, as much as we have, may struggle with that, because there is the potential to connect with the risen Lord. And so for me, also in nature, as St. Francis so forcefully believed, and as our present Pope believes, creation is a source of an encounter with God. 
If you have never had an, an overwhelming experience of nature, then you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you have come out one morning and seen the beauty of nature, the sun and the, 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 the beautiful flora and fauna and all the rest, and it takes your breath away, there is truth, there is goodness, there is beauty, there is God. And so I really believe that in the material world we encounter God. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only way we can encounter God in that sense. But there is another way, and I think we see it here in the Gospel this morning. John, the beloved disciple, had a very intimate relationship with Christ, and we see that at the Last Supper, when he lays his head against the chest of Jesus in an act of intimacy and love. He's connected on a spiritual level, way beyond the bodily. To me, we also are connected to Jesus in our spiritual relationship with him, in our prayer, in our worship, in the service that we give to those in need, to the suffering, to the poor, to the marginalized. We once again connect to the Lord. Prayer is the other way that we connect to the Lord. And prayer over a lifetime, in the good times and the bad times, when we feel God's presence and when we don't. And I'll be honest, most of the time I don't. That connection is built because it is the other side of the relationship, the side that God is on, that determines the health of the soul. All we have to do in prayer is be there and open ourselves to that divine presence breathing on us, allowing us to put our heads on his chest as well and to be embraced in that embrace of love that only God can give to us. And so the Lord lives. He lives in the created world. He lives in our relationships. He lives in our bodies. And he lives in our prayers. Our responsibility is to be not just believe that as if it was some abstract doctrine, but to live it. By service to the neighbor, service to the suffering, service to those in need and by faithful prayer and faithful worship in a consistent way throughout our lives. And then we are open to the risen Lord and his life flows into us and through us to make for a world that is healed, that is filled with love, that is not hopeless, but filled with the hope of God. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we, we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin 
so as to live in the freedom of the children of God. I do. Do you renounce the lore of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We bring our needs to our loving God, who always hears them. For God's holy church, that through our words and actions we may continually testify to the hope and promise of Christ's resurrection in everything we do. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For those entrusted with leading their countries, that they work in the spirit of the resurrection to bring peace and new life to those ravaged by war and devastated by poverty. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For those who are discouraged and affected by the spread of the coronavirus, that they will find, in the hope of the resurrection, a way to renewed spirit of health in mind and body, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. As the earth quaked at the resurrection, may we be shaken from our complacency and receive this new spirit to use in service to one another. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May the newly risen Lord receive the lives of those who will die this day and bring them to the joy of his resurrected life. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, may they find eternal peace and joy in God's kingdom. For the requests in our book of intentions, and especially at this mass, for Jerry and Betty Larson. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, on this day when we recall your love for us and the resurrection of your Son, we are filled with hope that all will be well. In that spirit, we have brought our needs, that which we have voiced and that deep within us. With great confidence, you will hear them and grant them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate the day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall never end. Christ is risen, earth and heaven, never more shall be the same. Break the bread of new creation, where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. God the first and last is with us, sing Hosanna. Now everyone. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, Alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing, Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save, Alleluia. But the pains which he endured, Alleluia. Our salvation have procured, Alleluia. Now he reigns above as King, Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing, Alleluia.